cuts and grooves made that thing just bend right around fully coated and it is just about ready to start the sanding process this thing has developed quite a nice shine to it but this is kind of cool to see most people have never seen how a mold is built and this is kind of the start and it's a small part so you can kind of see the whole process from start to finish and i've made enough progress here you can kind of visualize if you imagine this is the front where you'd be si sitting and there's going to be like a bolstered surface or some cushion that wraps around here and then a seat back that stands upright and then in this area where you got these nice curved surfaces this is toward the back of the boat as you would walk around to the front to the back you don't have any sharp corners then there's going to be a nice big oval shaped live well occupying that whole surface then the plan is to have some custom made tackle drawers that are going to go right here so when i'm right at the right at the helm area just in front of this i can reach back over here and i can dip you can dip bait out of the live well you can lean over to the side pull out your tackle drawers and uh rig baits I'll have all my rods, the console would be sitting like immediately in front of this. So you can imagine, say this is the console. And again, we got some tools and equipment there that we're using to build and shape this thing up. But it's kind of neat to see it at this phase. So you can see the basic shape forming. And then right now with these curved surfaces, you're like, well, how do you get three quarter inch thick plywood? How do you get quarter inch, three quarter inch plywood to bend in a curve like that? Well, what we're gonna do we're gonna take the skill saw sitting down there on the ground and these little lines, I've already marked out a series of little lines about an inch apart. And we're gonna almost cut completely through this plywood. We're only gonna leave like one little tiny thin layer at the bottom. So just a series of cuts with skill saw, almost through, almost completely through the plywood, but you can see it allows that plywood to curve. So that's how, when you're building a boat, a lot of times people wonder how you get these curved shapes and it's usually either you're cutting panels diagonally and planking them in a diagonal angle or you're cutting these little slices right through it and it'll give you that nice pretty curved shape got the panels applied to the pattern you can see how all those cuts and grooves made that thing just bend right around beautiful put quite a few screws in there to kind of hold it nice and tight kind of came back and we sanded the edges and the corners a little bit to blend all that then we'll come we'll come in there and we'll fill this with some body filler and then fiberglass over it we'll ferret prime it polish it so it's looking good pretty excited we're gonna come back probably gonna go get a bite of lunch and then after lunch we're gonna be putting the the top on this one so we kind of got like a almost looks like this is the top but this is just basically a a uh, support for the edges to get the profile exactly like I want and then this little piece here in the middle is kind of going to be a support so that this is going to have some nice curve to the top it's going to be very slight it's going to be almost hard to see but that's going to kind of support there in the middle and there it is so we've got those rounded corners put a nice bull nose edge on all these corners I'm going to resin coat this next but you can see these corners are nice and round Got a beautiful little little bit of curve, a little bit of crown to the top of this. We trimmed all these edges, so we got ni a nice flange around the parameter of this thing. And you can see how it would kind of made up to uh, the new console. So we got the console pattern built here, and it's already been fiberglassed and coated in the gray vinyl ester primer. And that's kind of what's coming next for this one. Got it all resin coated and sealed. You can see a little bit of gloss and shine on that surface. I've also gone around it and kind of slightly sanded any little drips or runs or any little minor uh, imperfections we got on that surface. And we're going to come back in here and we're going to fill all these grooves with a nice uh, body filler, fill all these screw heads and everything. Get ready to put some fiberglass on this thing. We got the fiberglass work all done. And what we've done now, you can see this thing's kind of like a light blue, kind of light blue uh, color. Got it coated with two coats of a uh, polyester body filler. So basically it's like a creamy paste, put a hardener in there and uh, use a putty blade, something like this to uh, spread this material out over here. It's almost like I was telling my son yesterday, it's kind of like frosting a giant cake. If you look at this thing, it's almost like a, a giant, <laughs> looks like I frosted a giant cake. It took nearly all day long to get this thing fully coated. And what we're gonna be doing next is using this uh, variable speed, it's a Bosch 
variable speed grinder. We can change the speed on this thing with that little dial. And got a fairly aggressive disc there. That's a 40 grit. And what we're gonna do is just kind of knock off all the rough edges. So this is kind of a rough feel. There's still quite a bit of sanding and fairing to do before we get this thing ready to shoot the primer on it. But we're gonna start with that rough cut. And I'm gonna be spending the better part of the day sanding this thing down. Four coats of primer shot all the way around. You know, there's a lot of shadow, but you can kind of see the shine on that. Got it all coated, got all the bodywork covered up, all the fiberglass covered up, all the pinholes sealed. And that is a product, uh, that's a company called Duratech. Uh, it's called Duratech, it's made by Hawkeye Industries, and it's uh, really good for building molds. So this is gonna be kind of the last layer on the actual part before we start wet sanding and then uh, polishing and then waxing. Last time y'all saw me, we had just shot the primer on this part and we have actually made it now through the sanding process and uh, the compounding and we've now moved on to the actual waxing. So you can see this thing has developed quite a nice shine to it. It's coming right along. And so what we've done since you see me last, we had just sprayed the Duratech primer on there. And what we did is we sanded this. We went over it progressively with a nice dual action sander here. And uh, we started basically with 220 grit sandpaper. And then we went to 400 and we went to 600. That's as far as we went with the, the, the grit. Uh, no need in going any finer than that because we're going to sand it once the mold is uh, off. We'll polish the inside of that mold. And then we went over that with a, a compound and a polishing wheel. So we used the variable speed sander you saw earlier when we were uh, fairing out the material and we used the 3M compound and finishing material is what we've used. I found the 3M compounding and finishing material to be excellent for building molds and patterns. And it's also what I use on the boat. So when we need to compound, compound oxidation out of the hull, that is what we use. And right now we have moved on to, and I say we, Logan's actually here helping me today, my son, but uh, we're using a special wax. It's a high temp mold release wax. And we're applying layers, we're applying layers of that to this part. Matter of fact, it takes a lot of wax when you're building a brand new piece. We gotta wax both this part and the console seven times. So me and Logan have been waxing all day long. We're putting it on, we're taking it off. We're actually using the same, the same buffing wheel that we did the compounding, the same uh, machine, but a different, a different pad. And that's what we're using. So we're, we're putting the wax on by hand and then we're using this machine to take that wax off. So we're at about five coats right now. We're trying to get that done today. And um, once we get the wax on here, we're ready to start spraying the, uh, the vinyl ester, a high gloss top coat, which will actually be part of the mold. We've got the orange primer sprayed on these parts. That is the high gloss top coat. You can see the, uh, we've got the console mold over here. And then we've got the pedestal seat base. That's the part that I've been uh, kind of documenting what we're building. And you can see now we've got this, this coat of a bright orange finish. And then there's the console to match. And what we did, we've got four coats of uh, this orange. It's a high gloss, it's an orange. It's an orange vinyl ester high gloss top coat. And what we're about to do is put four more coats of the gray vinyl ester primer. So we're moving right along. This is gonna be actually, this coat is part of the actual mold. And uh, once the gray primer's on, we'll put, start putting fiberglass over that. And that'll be the part that's gonna actually build the console. Uh, we made it to the next step here. Last time y'all saw, we had shot the orange primer on, these, uh, on the parts. And we have now made it to, we've got them back in gray. It almost looks like we're almost looks like we're back where we started but we're actually making progress so we've done the orange we've done the gray primer and now we've moved on to this one and i don't know if you can see this or not but we've sanded this sanded this with a fairly heavy grit uh sandpaper just a little block and we're just putting we just put a surface on that some little surface scratches i don't know if you can see that versus this so next I'll be sanding all these surfaces and uh, today we are getting really, really close to actually putting some fiberglass on these parts. So uh, we're moving, moving right along. Uh, <laughs> it's been a serious process. When people ask me why is it taking so long to build this boat, 
you can see that even just with these small parts, there is a lot of labor involved. But you can actually look at the molds now, and I think you can see there's a layer of uh, there's a layer of fiberglass on there. You can see we've got one coat, and you can kind of see where it overhangs off the edges, and it uh, it cured overnight, and uh, came back this morning, and we lightly kind of sanded the edges here, so we kind of knocked down. There's usually going to be some little splinters and rough edges. I would never run my hand over that if I hadn't sanded it first. You can see where it's been sanded. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going ahead and cutting all the pieces of fiberglass. And I got a piece over here that you can see. So on the pedestal seat base, the part that we've been working on, I've got a piece of, uh, we call this mat or chop strand mat. And it's just little small fibers of fiberglass. And when we saturate this with resin, it'll go transparent. It'll look like, it'll look like that. And so this piece is already torn and cut to fit. You can see how I got it just slightly slightly overlapping the edges that's one way to get a really nice job is to kind of feather these edges out and i'll take a roller uh, all we're using is something really simple we're just using a uh, inexpensive hair roller and we'll saturate this with resin and you'll roll roll that out and wet it out and so we've got one coat on there about to put the second coat on and then hopefully we're going to be using a new chopper gun to get the rest of it done so i won't bore you with all the details on the next maybe when we're running the chopper gun i'll show that but i've got multiple coats to build we're going to try to build these parts up to about three eighths of an inch thick so pretty substantial amount of glass there we're back at the pedestal seat base we're making the mold and we kind of went through the process of how to make it so i'm build the wood form so let me spray the fiberglass and the tooling gel and uh, actually now we have separated that is the pedestal base that i built and then there is the mold that we built on top of that. So you can see they're like mirror images of each other. And I apologize for not getting the separation when we pulled the parts from one another, but I do have the console mold right over here. And it's kind of the same deal. You can see the, the plug or the pattern is, is this part. And then this part is the actual mold, the fiberglass that we built the mold on the outer. And you can see this gap, this space that has started to form. If you step back, you can see we've got the console upside down right now. So the console is upside down, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use this chain fault up overhead. We've got a big chain fault that runs up, and we made just a real basic rope bridle and hooked onto the caster wheels. And you can see the mold is already trying to separate from the plug, and uh, we got a little pressure on it now, but I'm sorry, I apologize, we missed the, uh, the separation of the uh, pedestal seat base, but hopefully we'll get the separation of this. I'm gonna get my son Logan to hold the camera here in just a second, and that will show it from kind of start to finish how we build a plug or a mold. You build a plug and a mold, but uh, it's kind of a smaller version of how we built the big boat. So it's just basically you build a part that looks like what you want, and then you build a fiberglass shell on the outside of that and separate one from the other. And then what we can do is this is really nice and slick and shiny on the inside we will spray whatever color gel coat we want the part to be and then build that up with fiberglass and the live well the live well will fit in this area right in there and then the tackle boxes will actually be you know accessible from the side once we build the part but they'll kind of occupy this this space in the middle all right we're going to blow a little bit of a little bit of air pressure in there and see See if that'll help get this thing to open up. that we get a little bit of air pressure and voila all right I'm gonna pick up on it a little bit more so you kind of see look at that we just had to introduce a little bit of air into that it's kind of like when two five gallon buckets are stuck together the air lock
we have separated the two, and I'm just going to scoot the mold under the plug, and then we can let the plug back down very carefully. Hey, it does balance, Logan. Look. Kind of. Yeah. It's not perfect, but I didn't know if it was going to balance at all, but it kind of does. There we go. All right, so there we go. That is it. Got the console hanging right there. We've got the mold separated from it. We can see down inside that is a big part. Lots of room inside of that console. There she is. That's kind of cool to see those two parts. That constitutes a whole bunch of work. So there you have it, y'all. That is the process of building a mold console and pedestal seat base. Same principle as building the mold. The molds are, for the hull is a lot more work, but uh, there you go. Got it behind us. Awesome. Pretty happy with that.